hey guys, here is the whole topic summary for AQA Chemistry Chemical Analysis. Now in here I'm going to go through all the different parts that you need to know. If you want to check stuff off as we go along, you can get that in the free revision guide which you can get from our website or from Amazon. A pure substance is just going to have one thing in it, whether that is an element or one compound in it. A mixture is going to have lots of different things in it. Lots of different elements, lots of different compounds. Compounds are going to be things that are chemically bonded together. Mixtures are not chemically bonded together. If you have a pure substance, it is going to melt at its melting point. If you have a mixture, it is going to melt over a range of melting points. We can test this by getting some crystals of the pure solution into a very, very thin tube. Putting it into a rather old-fashioned here melting point apparatus, you can see that the ends of the very, very thin tube have the crystals in, so we can see that happening. And then they go in the top of the melting point apparatus. And as the temperature rises, this is slowly heated up, we can have a look through the little glass window and see if the um, substance melts at one temperature or whether it melts slowly over a range of temperatures. We can use chromatography to separate out compounds and you're going to get probably what you did in class is beautiful, beautiful um, separations by uh, felt pen. We need to make sure that the end of the paper is just in the water and that you've drawn your start line in pencil. If you draw it in pen, then your start line is going to run as well and that is going to cause you problems. We're going to put a lid on here to stop the solvent evaporating. When we want to work out RF value, we do the distance moved by the spot divided by the distance moved by the solvent. In an experiment, when you see bubbles coming off something, chances are it's going to be one of these four types of gases. Hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide or chlorine gas. To test for hydrogen gas, it is a squeaky pop. To test for oxygen gas, it is going to relight a glowing splint. Carbon dioxide turns lime water cloudy and chlorine gas is going to bleach damp. Litmus paper. I love flame tests. They are so, so pretty. You need to know that lithium will burn with the crimson flame, sodium will burn with the yellow flame, potassium will burn with the lilac flame, calcium with the red flame, barium with the green flame, even though it doesn't look green, and copper is going to burn with the blue green flame. If you're going to use sodium hydroxide to test for your positive ions, we need to look at the ionic equations and we need to look at the precipitates. Testing for aluminium or sodium hydroxide is going to give you a white precipitate, which is then going to dissolve. Testing for calcium with sodium hydroxide is just going to give you a white precipitate, which will not dissolve. Testing for magnesium with sodium hydroxide will give you a white precipitate, so in this circumstance you would need another test to differentiate between calcium and magnesium. Copper ions will give you a light blue precipitate, iron 2 ions will give you a grey green precipitate and iron 3 ions will give you an orange precipitate. For the ionic equations we have our hydroxide ion and then our metal ions and you are expected to know all of these. Then you just need to make sure your number of negative hydroxide ions is equal to the number of positive ions. So aluminium is 3 positive so it needs 3 negative ions to become neutral overall. Calcium is two positive, so it needs two negative ions to become neutral overall. Magnesium, OH2. Calcium, OH2. Iron, OH2. Iron 3, OH3. If you want to test for halide ions, you can add silver nitrate, and chloride ions will give a white precipitate. Bromide ions will give a cream precipitate, and iodide ions will give a yellow precipitate. Yellow but not as yellow as the walls of my lab used to be. Now this can sometimes be a very, very subtle difference and the best way to do it is by comparing it with the other things. 
If you want to test something for a carbonate ion, you need to add hydrochloric acid, set up a delivery tube so any gas evolved will be collected down into lime water, and if it is carbon dioxide, the lime water will go cloudy. If you want to test a sample to see if it contains sulphite ions, you need to add hydrochloric acid, you need to add barium chloride, and if it contains sulphite ions, you will get a white precipitate formed. In some cases, doing tests in class might not be as good as using an instrumental method. Instrumental methods can be faster, they can be more accurate, and they are unbiased.